What is up guys? I'm back with another video looking at two uh, uh, types of anemia that are commonly overlooked when studying for the step one, at least for me. Um, I remember studying through microcytic, normocytic, and macrocytic anemia, but not really looking at two of these anemias that are often not talked about that present earlier in life, whether it be congenital, which one of them is, and the other one being an inherited anemia. So let's get right into this. The two that is going to be I'm going to be covering today is diamond black fan anemia and Fanconi anemia. So let's just get right into this. I've pre-typed out a little chart that we're going to use to look at the major characteristics of each, how to recognize it, what causes each, the, the general definition, how the labs will present it, and the age of onset. I don't have the treatment on here because I can go ahead and tell you right now that the treatment, the general treatment, best treatment for both of them will really be a bone marrow transplant, especially for Fanconi anemia more so. Um, other than that, they try to use hematopoietic stem cell growth factors and stuff, but they usually don't work very well. So the best treatment is usually going to be um, the bone marrow transplant for complete treatment, uh, for complete cure of these anemias. So let's get right into this. I'm, I use mnemonics always uh, to try to remember a lot of things that I can easily mix up. So the mnemonic for diamond black fan anemia, we're going to draw a diamond ring. So this is a diamond ring, and when I think of a diamond, I can see, I think of the three edges of a diamond when you draw a simple drawing. So we have the ring part, and we have the diamond part. This diamond has three edges, the way it would fit into the actual like socket of the ring. It has three edges, so that can lead us to the parts of diamond black fan anemia, remembering kind of how it presents and stuff like that. So let's begin with what is the cause of diamond black fan anemia. So the cause of diamond black fan anemia is going to be ribosome, ribosome synthesis um, basically is altered or does it work correctly. So that is what they think is the cause of this diamond black fan anemia. And the definition of diamond black fan anemia is going to be a congenital a congenital pure red cell aplasia. So what does that mean? Well, that means congenital just means it's present at birth. So any all your patients who have this, so we can go ahead and fill this in, the age of onset is going to be birth. It's basically babies is going to have this uh, presenting. So it's congenital and it's a pure red cell aplasia. Well, remember, so pure red cell is telling you that the issue is only involving red cell. So this is an anemia where you're only going to have the red blood cells affected uh, and the reticulocytes, which are the precursors for the red blood cells. And that aplasia is telling you, remember whenever you have A in front of whatever it may be, for example, a granulocytosis means you are without granulocytes. So in this example, you are without whatever they're referring to, and what they're referring to is the pure red cell. It's a pure red cell without, so aplasia. That is the definition for diamond black fan anemia. Now, now we get to the, the mnemonic part, the part that you have to be able to recognize this disease in a question. I drew a diamond because it has three points, so that tells you that you're dealing something with three sides. And the fact that it's a ring should help you remember that it's something involving a finger abnormality. And the abnormality that's most commonly seen with diamond black fan anemia is something called triphalangeal, triphalangeal thumbs. That is a very common issue with uh, diamond black fan anemia. So a baby's born, they have a triphalangeal thumb. So what does that mean? Well, what that means is a thumb usually is diphalangeal. It will have only two bones uh, within the thumb, whereas your other fingers are triphalangeal. They have three bones, uh, three phalangeal bones going through them, and thus they are longer than the thumb. But when you see a thumb that is is triphalangeal, which is an abnormality, it makes the thumb longer because it actually has an extra uh, phalangeal bone and a phalangeal joint therefore in it. So how do we remember all that? Well, the ring should cue you into the fact that, okay, diamond, you think of diamond ring, like in the title, diamond black fan, and then also think that when you draw the diamond part, this little simple drawing of a diamond has three sides. When you draw a diamond that fits into a ring, it's usually shaped like a triangle. A triangle has three sides, therefore we are dealing with a tri, means three phalangeal thumb. Okay, now the labs for this. Well, the labs are relatively simple when it comes to how the CBC is going to look. It's going to have decreased RBCs and decreased reticulocytes. I'm just going to put RET. 
Okay, so that, that's kind of common sense because if you know it's a congenital pure red cell aplasia, then you know that this is decreased RBCs and decreased reticulocytes. Now here's something that I read from a website called Medicosum. I, think, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Fantastic website. I, I recommend you go and use this website for USMLE Step 1 mnemonics and stuff to remember diseases. So full credit for this part goes to them. How do you remember that it is a pure red cell aplasia? Well, when you look at the word black fan, you see that black. So I want you to think of this, say this is a bone, and in here is the bone marrow. If bone marrow is black or dark and you, there's nothing in there, that is telling you that there's no red blood cells because red blood cells have color, right? So uh, you could imagine red blood cell is red. That's how it presents. So if, if the bone marrow is all black, then that, that is hinting you towards the fact that there's no red blood cells because red blood cells would make it red within the black area. So that's just a little kind of mnemonic, uh, mnemonic way to remember um, that this is a pure red cell aplasia because telling you the bone marrow, just remember the bone marrow is all black inside, therefore there's no RBCs. And that was all from uh, Medicosum, a fantastic website, so go check them out. And then, um, so that covers the physical. So the physical, uh, how you're going to present triphalangeal thumbs. You also could have, let me add to this, short stature. That's uh, common in a majority of patients. But I, the reason I didn't mention short stature, and I want you to focus on triphalangeal thumbs, is because this is, you know, this is kind of what the question will use to point you toward diamond black fan. Because over in Fanconi, it also has short stature. Whereas the other physical characteristics in Fanconi can distinguish. So I'm trying to list stuff that will distinguish this specific anemia from all the other anemias. We have the age of onset. We said that it's babies. There's one more thing, though, in the labs that is important before we move on to Fanconi anemia. This is a non-megaloblastic, non-megaloblastic, macrocytic anemia. Now, I'm sure all of you know what macrocytic anemia is. That just means that these are really big uh, red blood cells and it's defined as an MCV so they'll give you in the question it'll tell you that the MCV which means mean corpuscular volume which just means the RBC's volume the total size of the RBC it'll tell you that if if it something is above 100 MCV then that means that it is then macrocytic or big in size whereas if it's below 80 for an MCV below 80 that is called microcytic and then normocytic is between 80 and 100. Is, that's considered normal. And there's various anemias for each of those categories. This just happens to be a macrocytic anemia. But it doesn't end there. It is a non-megaloblastic macrocytic. What does that mean? Well, if something is... If something is... Uh, let me just start with this. If something is megaloblastic... If something is megaloblastic and micro, macrocytic... That means that if it's megaloblastic, it has altered DNA synthesis with it. And in altered DNA synthesis, you will have hypersegmented neutrophils. Okay, let me repeat that. In megaloblastic macrocytic anemia, you will have altered DNA synthesis causing hypersegmented neutrophils on histology. Now, we're this is not referring, let me mark this out, this is not referring to megaloblastic. This is a non-megaloblastic macrocytic. That means there is no DNA synthesis problems. There's no DNA synthesis problems. Therefore, these are not hypersegmented neutrophils on histology, okay? But it's still macrocytic. This is to distinguish this from vitamin B12 and vitamin B9 deficiency. Um, so you know vitamin B9, also called folate, uh, deficiency and then vitamin B12 deficiency, they are megaloblastic macrocytic anemias. Okay, so that will help you uh, to distinguish that this is a non megaloblastic macrocytic anemia, therefore, this has no DNA synthesis problems. Okay, all right, so that's all of the um, oh, yes, and how do you remember this is non megaloblastic? The last mnemonic I want to use so, what are our mnemonics? We have the diamond ring. It has three points for triphalangeal. It's a ring, so that helps you remember it's dealing with the thumb, triphalangeal thumb. The other mnemonic is black fan. You look at the part black in the word black fan. That tells you that the bone marrow is black in here. There's no red inside, so this is that helps you remember pure red cell aplasia. And the final mnemonic I want you to use to remember that this is a non-megaloblastic macrocytic anemia is that because you know this is a congenital pure red cell aplasia, 
if you can remember that this is a congenital and this is showing up from the time they're born in babies, that should tell you that this is a non-mega patient. What does mega mean? Mega means something that's big. It's mega in size. If a baby is the smallest possible size you'll be in your life, right? So a baby is non-mega in size. Non, so that's to help you remember non-megaloblastic a baby. That's going to become useful because when we come over to Fanconi anemia, it is not non-megaloblastic anemia. It is megaloblastic uh, macrocytic anemia. But Fanconi can actually present with a megaloblastic macrocytic anemia or it can also present with a normocytic anemia, okay? So that's why I kind of want you to remember more so that this, just remember this one, the diamond black fan anemia is the non-megaloblastic uh, macrocytic anemia. Okay, so I'm going to clean up this page and we're going to jump over to Fanconi anemia. If you need any of this writing, just rewind and you can read it all again. So now we're going to move into Fanconi anemia. Now Fanconi anemia, this is a really clever, there's more mnemonics I use because I always use mnemonics to help remember everything. I'm going to draw a fan. We're going to use, in Fanconi anemia, we're going to use FAN for the word fan, like a little fan you plug into the wall and then, okay, so Here's, here's my fan. I'm a really bad, and I'm not good at drawing, so sorry. All right. Imagine if a fan is blowing, it's turning, like it's on, and it's blowing air at you, that you become cold. And when you're cold, you say burr, like I'm cold. You shiver. You say that, burr. Okay, that's going to help you remember. What is the cause of Fanconi anemia? It's a burka to mutation a burka because I'm cold because it's a fan blowing on me to mutation and that is leading to this is important to remember DNA repair issues so this burka to mutation causes DNA repair issues now now that we know that let's go to the definition this is an inherited an inherited um, aplastic anemia now over with diamond black fan, I said that that was a pure red cell aplasia. That's only affecting the red blood cells. And I said, how do we remember that? Because remember, we use the, the word black in black fan. But in this case, this is an inherited, and specifically it's autosomal recessive. If you're having trouble remembering all the diseases that are autosomal recessive, autosomal dominant, and etc., X-linked, I recommend going to check out Dirty USMLE. They have fantastic songs that the creator of those videos uh, made up to help you remember all of the important diseases that are autosomal recessive and dominant and they are fantastic so go check them out um, this is autosomal recessive and inherited autosomal recessive aplastic anemia aplastic means remember I said a is without plastic is kind of hinting towards everything all of it the total sum so it's all of the uh, the cells in the bone marrow are lacking you're anemic to all of the cells in other words okay so in this one, when you have the labs for this one, you will we'll see decreased RBCs, just like in Diamond Black Fan. You will see decreased reticulocytes, you, but you will also move into all the other cell types. You'll see decreased WBCs. You'll see decreased platelets. You'll see decreased mega, uh, mega, mega karyocytes, which, are, you know, which produce the platelets. You'll see all of the cells from the bone marrow will be decreased. That is the very definition of an aplastic anemia. Okay, so now that we know that, we can then go on to the physical uh, features of Fanconi anemia. Now let's go back to my mnemonic. We're going to use that fan again to remember this stuff. I said in diamond and black fan anemia that you have to remember diamond for the diamond ring, and that will help you remember the triphalangeal thumb abnormality. In this one, I want you to rem I want you to keep in mind that the fan is still blowing, it's still on, and you're still getting cold. But you happen it happens to as it's spinning, it happens to cut your thumb off. So, and I'm saying that because in this one, the physical exam will show in the patient a hypoplastic, hypoplastic, or even no thumb. So it could be shortened thumb or no thumb at all. That is going to be a common uh, physical exam feature, but it doesn't stop there. Plus, you are going to have radius bone abnormalities radius bone abnormalities. It could be that you don't have a radius bone. It could be that the radius bone is grown uh, ab ab abnormally. It could be that, you know, anything. Just think of any abnormality with the radius bone or upper arm abnormality specifically involving primarily the radius. 
this you're going to have this these features of that often present like this these hypoplastic or no thumb plus radius bone abnormalities now how do you remember that now we i said that the fan can cut your thumb off and that's how you remember that but how the heck do you remember radius bone abnormality along with that on physical exam. Here's how. When you look at a fan, the fan blade, let me go over to the diamond black fan side just so we can blow this up, the, this part of the fan up. It doesn't matter if the fan has three blades or four blades or however many blades, that doesn't matter. What does matter is that there's always a middle to the fan, right? And then it sits on a base. But this middle part is where the fan blades attach to. And the fan blades don't go all the way across like this in one piece. I mean, maybe a weird fan would, but most fans I think of, they stay like this. One blade goes to the middle, one, and then it kind of goes. In other words, remember back to geometry. If this is a line, this is the center. Half of the distance of this total line length is called the radius. And the total length would then be the diameter. We learn that in geometry or trigonometry. So think of it for this fan, just any old fan that's in the title, Fan Coney, draw a fan and imagine, oh, one fan blade length is, is the radius. That's the length of that fan blade for each one of these. It's the total length of the total diameter of the whole fan is what I'm trying to get at. So that will help you remember that the fan blades of this fan is the radius length of the total fan. That will help me to remember, okay, now we have the fan spinning. It you know, accidentally hit your finger, so you lose some of your thumb, and then that fan blade that hit you is the radius distance of the total distance of the fan, the total length of the whole entire fan it spans as it's spinning. Okay, so that's the way that I use to remember Fanconi anemia in how it differs from a physical exam features of diamond black fan anemia with the triphalangeal thumb. Okay, and the last thing to know is that the age of onset, you don't have to know the exact age, but it's, it's actually its um, most common age of presentation or average age of presentation is eight years old whereas over here it was birth remember diamond black fan anemia the age of onset was birth because it's congenital but this is inherited so it can and I want you to keep in mind this is the average it can be lower it can be higher it can be somewhere in the middle okay so just the average age but the fact of the matter is in Fanconi anemia you are a little bit older whereas in diamond black fan anemia you are a baby that's why the mnemonic works that I told you for diamond black fan anemia that um, that non, how do you remember, it's a non-megaloblastic anemia, it's because the ba a baby is the smallest that it will be its whole life. When you're a baby, you're the smallest you're going to be, and then you'll grow continuously. You are non-mega in size, therefore it's non-megaloblastic anemia. Okay, so I've covered the calls, the definition, the uh, physical features, the labs for this. Remember, I said for this one, this is a not a non-megaloblastic. The Fanconi anemia can present as a normocytic or a macrocytic, but it's a megaloblastic, macrocytic, if it does present as macrocytic. And then we also covered the age of onset. So those are all the kind of the important features. I could throw in treatment, but the treatments don't really work that well for these. You could say to give hematopoietic stem cell growth factors. Factors. I'm not going to go into detail on that because there's a lot of immunology in that and looking at the bone marrow lineage with the myeloid lineage, etc. But um, really the best treatment, especially for Fanconi anemia, you're going to need a bone marrow transplant to cure it. Okay, so those are all the important details and I will see you in another video. Also, if you like this video, um, please like subscribe to the channel and share the video to your social media or to all your friends who are studying this or come across these types of questions. I've come across